first, I want to discuss this green cabbage. This is organic, and I believe it was about $2.99. But if organic is not in your price range, don't worry. You can buy non-organic cabbage and simply remove some of the outer leaves and discard those, put them in the compost pile or whatever you want to do with them, and follow through with the same uh, directions that we're going to do today in making this uh, sauerkraut. Now the first thing that we want to do is remove some of these leaves, these outer leaves. We're not going to discard them unless, as I said, uh, if your cabbage is not organic, you can uh, discard the first, first uh, two leaves maybe. But if it's organic, save, save the first uh, few leaves that we remove and put them aside and I'll explain to you what we're going to do with those later. And if your cabbage is non-organic, uh, just take off, take off the first two, discard those, and then take off another two and put those aside and save those. And I'll show you how we're going to use those in, in a little bit. Alrighty, well I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take another uh, leaf off of this cabbage and then I'll uh, show you where we go from there. Well I've got my two big leaves to the side that I've set over there to save and now what I'm going to do is cut this right down the middle. Any way you do it is fine. What we're going to do is remove the core. So how we're going to do that is just put it flat like that to make it easier for you. You can certainly do it like this but it's a little more wobbly so I like to always put it flat side down, basically give it feet and make it a little easier to do. And then you'll see the core is right here so we're just going to cut in just making a V shape and we're going to pull that core out. Now don't discard this Put this aside because we're going to grind that up and we're also going to add that into our uh, homemade sauerkraut because this is going to be very rich in when it comes to making the probiotics that will start to multiply uh, in the homemade sauerkraut. Well I've removed the core from the cabbage. As you see that's gone and now what I'm going to do is just cut it in half again and half over here and then I'm just going to be, begin to shred it. And how you'll do that, and we'll just move this to the side, is just cut it as thinly as you can, just like that. Very similar to if you were making coleslaw. And just continue on down, cutting it until you're all finished. Just getting some nice, nice thin pieces or slices. Well I've got all my cabbage sliced up and now I'm going to transfer it to this glass bowl. Uh, any bowl you have will work fine. I normally use a stainless steel bowl uh, for the next step but I wanted to put it in a glass bowl so you could see what, that, what I was doing. Well I'll continue to get all this in here and then when I've got it all in I'll bring you back. Well I've got all the sliced cabbage in the bowl and now what I'm going to do is add two tablespoons of coarse ground sea salt. It's a very coarse ground as hopefully you can see this. It's very large, large grains to the salt. And I like to use this salt. This is a gray Celtic sea salt. It has a little bit of a wet feel to it. And um, it's, a, as I said, the coarse ground. And we're just going to sprinkle that right on top. And then the next step is the fun part. We're going to start mashing this down and mixing it with the salt and help the cabbage release some of its juices. Now I've got a kraut pounder. I love this thing and this was uh, given to me many years ago as a, as a gift and it's just been a wonderful helper when it comes to making sauerkraut. And all you're going to want to do is do like this. And we'll continue doing that but in case you don't have this I don't want you to worry. You can use a metal potato masher. You can use a plastic potato masher. That'll do the trick. If you don't have either of those, no problem. You can use uh, a soup. I forget what this is called. Isn't that terrible? Uh, a soup ladle. And you can just do like that. And if you don't have that, don't worry. If all else fails, just use the back of a spoon. And you're just going to want to get in there and just smash. It's a little bit of, of, of a job, but it builds up muscles. <laughs> so all we do is start pounding this down, mixing the salt into the cabbage, and the cabbage is going to start to release some of its juices, and it'll get watery, waterier and waterier as we continue to do this. And this takes 
10 minutes, it's not that long. And if you have any kids in the house, this is a good job for them. And just keep pounding it down. And when it's to the desired state that I want it to be, I'll show you and bring you back and we'll put it in the jar. Well, I've got this about to where uh, the consistency that I like it. And what I'm gonna do now is, uh, just first I wanna just get some of the cabbage off of that. And I wanna show you, I'm try to get a little closer to the camera. You'll see that the cabbage has softened a bit. It's mixed in all nicely. The salt is all dissolved and it's starting to release some of, of its uh, juices, the cabbage juices. So now what we do, we get a clean jar. This is a half gallon mason jar. Now, I wanna say a word about this. Some people, when they make this with one head of cabbage and two tablespoons of salt, will use a quart size jar and really pack it down good. And definitely packing it down good is important and we'll discuss that in a minute to help the, uh, it ferment properly. But I like to use a half gallon jar because I like to make sure that I get a lot of sauerkraut juice because sauerkraut juice is so rich in probiotics, better than any probiotic you could ever buy over the counter in a pill. And just to take about two ounces of the uh, sauerkraut juice every day will do wonders uh, for improving your gut, gut health if you have any problems uh, with digestion. And if you, if you have a healthy gut health, it'll, it'll just continue to keep your gut healthy. So I just wanted to share that, that that's why I'm using a, uh, a half gallon jar. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put this in and load up this jar and when it's all filled, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what our next step's gonna be. Well, I've got all the cabbage in my jar and now I'm gonna take the kraut pounder and I'm just gonna press and press and press. And as we do this, we're gonna see that liquid is gonna start to be released and start to come up and over the cabbage. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we start to see even more liquid than release than what was just in the bowl when we were uh, getting it started. And I'm just gonna keep doing this. And when I get some more liquid coming up to the top, I'll bring you back. Well, as you can see, the cabbage is releasing more and more liquid. And I'm just gonna take this kraut pounder out and try to See if you can see that. See the cabbage has released more liquid and it's uh, starting to soften beautifully. And now the next step that we're gonna do is what I like to think of as my secret ingredient. And let me set that up and I'll bring you right back. Now when I make sauerkraut, I like to add one apple to the mixture. And the reason is, this is an excellent source of pectin, and pectin is a terrific prebiotic, meaning that it helps feed the bacteria that create the probiotics. So this is always my little insurance policy, because some people, what I wanna say, is when they make sauerkraut, they may add um, the salt, but they may also add whey, which is very rich in probiotics. It's a byproduct that comes uh, off of milk when you make yogurt, cottage cheese, kefir, so on and so forth, any of your cultured dairy. And uh, if you add a quarter cup of whey, a little piece of cabbage on the outside of the jar, when you add a quarter cup of whey, you're almost guaranteeing that you've got plenty of uh, probiotics already in the cabbage to help things really go, uh, really get started. But I don't like the taste. I like whey. I think it's wonderful and I, en I enjoy drinking it over ice or mixed with sparkling water. It's delightful. But I don't like the, t I get a, the flavor in the sauerkraut and I don't like it. So what I like to do is simply add the salt and then add a little insurance of, with the sweetness from the apple and its prebiotic nature to, and cabbage is a prebiotic as well. And hopefully together, they really give a good boost to feed the bacteria and give it what it needs to get going and make, uh, turn the cabbage into sauerkraut. And it's usually always worked for me, so I think it's a good trick. Well, I've washed and dried this apple, and I'm going to just cut it up. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the skin on. That's just fine. I'm just gonna cut a little bit of the core out because I don't want the seeds. And then I'm just gonna cut this up 
and put it in my blender. You'll see why we're putting it in the blender in a minute. And I'm going to continue cutting this up and then I'm going to fill you in on why I saved the core of the cabbage. Now I just want to, I just want to say a word about uh, these apple cores. Don't throw them out. Put them aside, put them in a bag, um, put them in your fridge, and when you get a nice collection of these, you can make apple cider vinegar. You can even add some, you know, apples that may be a little past their prime, whatever the case may be, or it can just be core scraps. Um, you can add uh, other fruit and make a fruit scrap vinegar a mixture, which I have a video on, and I'll link to that so that you can watch that. Uh, video as well. So don't throw these out. Save them. And now, why did we keep the core? Well, the core of the cabbage. Well, it serves the same uh, purpose that the apples do. This is very rich in prebiotics and will help additionally feed the good bacteria to help it grow and proliferate and make the cabbage uh, a wonderful probiotic food. So don't throw out your core of the cabbage. Just chop it up. Just rough chop. It's not. It's not uh, important what size it is because, as you see, I'm putting it in the blender for a reason. And I'll just continue to chop up this core. There we go. We're going to get that in there. Then what we're going to do is top this off with some spring water. Now you want to use spring water as opposed to tap water because tap water will have chlorine in it and that will interfere uh, with the good bacteria as it's trying to proliferate and make the uh, cabbage into sauerkraut and make it a wonderful probiotic rich side dish. Now if you don't have a source of spring water, don't worry about it. You can use your tap water, just boil it and let it cool down to room temperature. Don't let, you don't want it to be warm. and. Um, that will help some of the chlorine dissipate. You can also leave it overnight and that'll help some of the chlorine to dissipate. So that uh, hopefully gives you some options. Alrighty, well now I'm just going to pour in some water, just enough to cover. Not even 100% not even covered. We'll start with that and we'll see uh, how it works turning it into a slurry. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this started. And then when it's uh, all swirled up into a nice slurry, I'll bring you back. Well, I've turned that apple and the core of the cabbage into a nice slurry. And now we're going to pour this right in with our uh, sliced cabbage. Now I just want to point out, you'll see there are little red specks in here because I used a red apple. Many times I use a green apple, uh, but it, it really doesn't matter and it's just personal choice. Uh, if you don't like seeing the red specks, you can certainly use a green apple, but I had a red apple so that's what I decided to use. So now I'm just going to go ahead and pour this right in over our cabbage. Excellent. Alrighty. And now let me just set this blender aside and we're going to mix this up a little, press it down again uh, with the kraut pounder and I'll bring you back. Now all I'm going to do is just mix this in with the cabbage to hopefully get it nicely mixed and get ready to just finish it off, top it off with a little more water and then I'll show you why we save those cabbage leaves. Well I've got this nicely mixed together. Now I'm just going to set this fork aside. I'm going to go get my kraut pounder again and we're going to give this some real, oh look at that, see how the liquid's just really coming up now. It's beautiful. It's just released so much liquid along with what we added and it's really going to be just wonderful and we're going to get a lot of kraut juice out of this as well. And that's what I like because I like to skim that off the top once the, the cabbage is um, turned into sauerkraut, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, for the drinking the kraut juice, which is very nutritious. Alrighty, well I think that's good where we've gotten to that point and now I want to share with you why we save those cabbage leaves. What we're going to do is take these cabbage leaves, you can break them up, fold them, whatever you need to do. The bottom line is you just need to get them into the jar and cover up the cabbage. So I'm just going to squeeze these in here like this and push those down right on top. I wanted to mention make sure that your hands are clean when you're doing this because you don't want to introduce any uh, unhealthy bacteria. 
Alrighty, and I'm just going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to get that down. Perfect. And then we're going to push everything down, get everything submerged. And what's nice is those outer leaves also very like, much like the core, are also very high in prebiotics. So they add to the whole process of helping this culture beautifully and become nice and probiotic rich. Alrighty, now the next step is, I have a little, another little trick. To weight this all down, all I use is a simple little uh, four ounce jelly jar. These are canning jars that you use uh, when you make jelly. You can usually find these at the grocery store and at other big box kind of stores. And all I do is simply put that right in there and it just works as a weight to hold everything down and submerged under the liquid. Because that's what you want to achieve. You want to keep everything submerged by, because by keeping it submerged you prevent uh, any um, bad bacteria forming mold, so on and so forth. Keep everything submerged under the liquid, under a weight, and you'll be able to produce a lovely sauerkraut. Now, there are other options if you uh, want to use something different. There's a company that sells uh, little glass weights and uh, various little tops that you can put on uh, to help with the fermentation and process. All of that's wonderful. But I wanted to show, um, in terms of keeping this extremely budget friendly, I wanted to show very simple things that you can use that you might even already have around your home uh, for making sauerkraut. Alrighty, well the next step now is we're going to want to get a uh, canning ring and a canning top. And the reason that I like to use these is if as this ferments, it's going to become very fizzy. And I just find it easier to, uh, again, I'm just going to make this, you know, finger tight. And I find it easier to loosen this, let a little bit of the fizz out if necessary, and then retighten it. And then when I get, when I start seeing it really get nice and bubbly and the color is starting to change, I will take this top off and I personally just find it easier even though you might it might have really formed a seal at that at, at some point while it's fermenting I find it a little easier and a little less intimidating to just take a little can opener and boop pop it open because sometimes it can become quite uh, fizzy and that build up a bit of pressure um, so I find that if I use I'm just going to reach over and get the plastic lid. This lid I sometimes find almost can be a little nerve-wracking to opening a boom like that. <laughs> so that's why I, I often don't, don't use these. I prefer to use the little canning lids. But certainly you, you can, if this is what you have and you want to use this, that's fine. And uh, when I have used these lids in the past, what I do is each day, you know, I see it's bubbling. I let out a little air, tighten it again. Next day, let out a little air, tighten it again um, to try to keep out as much oxygen as possible, but at the same time, release some of the carbon dioxide that's made during the fermentation process. So I'm going to put the canning lid on and the canning, and the canning ring, and as I said, you know, just finger tight. And now I'm going to find a warm, cozy place in my kitchen to put this where it can rest undisturbed, but at the same time where I can check on it every day and see how... Uh, how it's progressing. And it's really very variable. It depends at what time of year you're doing this and what the temperature is in your kitchen. But after a few days, what you can do is open it up. You know, as I said, and I will, if I see a lot of fizz, I will loosen it, let a little of the carbon dioxide out, and then put the lid back on, tighten it up again. Um, but that also gives you a chance to take out your weight and give it a taste and see if it's to your liking. If it is, perfect. At that point, I will then remove the canning lid and I will transfer to one of these plastic lids and refrigerate it. And it's ready to eat. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's such an easy uh, probiotic rich side dish to make that uh, while cabbage is in, is in season, buy it, 
try to make up a couple of batches of this, keep it in your refrigerator, it'll, it'll last a, you know, a good six months, uh, if, if it even lasts that long, because I think everyone in, the, in, in your family, yourself and your friends and family will definitely be enjoying it. It's got uh, homemade sauerkraut, has a wonderful flavor, and uh, it's also much more healthy for you than what you could buy in the store in the can. Now I've just put the uh, sauerkraut in the making over there to be undisturbed and uh, to go ahead and uh, begin the fermentation process. And I wanted to show you, this is a sauerkraut that I made a couple of weeks ago and I have it in my fridge. And the longer that you keep it in your refrigerator, the uh, more it will ferment. It's much slower than when at room temperature, but it will continue to ferment and get a little softer and so on and so forth. And I just wanted to show you when this uh, was fermenting on my counter and when I took it out uh, and tasted it, I th thought the consistency was good, a little, little crunchier, more crunchy than you know what you would get uh, in the can at the grocery store or in the jar at the grocery store. But I knew that it would continue to do a slow ferment in my fridge and so I thought, well, I'll leave it in there. And uh, then uh, after a few weeks, I'll give it a ch taste and see how I like it. So I'll give, that, uh, give this a taste right now. Mm. That is so good. And I think what's nice about homemade sauerkraut, this is not as tangy as uh, often sauerkraut sometimes you get at the store. So that's a good thing, especially if you're feeding children. It's very flavorful and the apple gives it a little bit of touch of sweetness and this one I had used a green apple so you don't see the little specks. It gives it just a little touch of sweetness and you can also if you like you can add caraway seeds. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, you can even make international versions of homemade sauerkraut like kimchi. There's so many variations and definitely things that your friends and family will love and at the same time be eating something that's very probiotic rich, very good for your health, very good for your gut health.